Hey guys, my name is Mark Barube. I'm a former professional baseball player in the Oakland A's organization. I'm a pitching coach at the Academy of Baseball Canada. Hi guys, I'm Aileen Dovan, certified athletic therapist and founder of Rehab U Movement and Performance Therapy, and welcome to our YouTube channel. So today we're going to talk about a topic that is often discussed in athletics, especially in rotational sports, which is the hip to shoulder separation, or uh, commonly uh, in golf we call this uh, the X factor. So we often talk about getting in, into that position, right? Getting that X factor that is something that is going to be very important to improve your performance. But I guess we don't really talk much about getting out of it, where the power comes from. So it's something that we're going to dig a little further uh, today, and it's something that's it's really it's a multi variable component right we're going to talk about hip to shoulder separation but it's not really the only thing that we want to look at because this component is very useless if we don't have the other components which are like the hips mobility that we discussed previously right hey guys thanks for watching our videos and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel yeah, we touched upon hip mobility in a previous capsule and we talked about how, you know, we look at mobility as range of motion and as Mark said, being able to get into positions, but it's also about getting out of positions. And that requires dissociation, meaning you're able to separate the pieces essentially. Otherwise, it's like you don't really have a hip. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure you go and check it out on the channel. And now let's go see what we're talking about when we talk about this X factor and hip to shoulder separation. So we're going to see Carl here uh, set up for a throw. So usually when we want to throw, it's, as we said, it's a multi-variable component, right? There's a couple of stuff that's happening at the same time. But what we're going to see him here is really like he's going to have to dissociate the pelvis. But what does that? It's actually the obliques, right? So he's going to have to have uh, the ability to relax the oblique to allow that stretch and the ability to contract the uh, contralateral obliques to twist the pelvis and then when the pelvis twists, he's gonna have to sustain with a lot of isometric strength. And then after that, when the uh, elastic band is pulled and he feels like, all right, it's time to go, that's when we're gonna have to really get that oblique right here to pull the torso forward. And that's where the power comes from, right? Um, it's gonna be very important to, well, you, we can see you throw one if you wanna. So what we're going to do is we're going to look into how do we screen for that? How do we screen to tell if an athlete has the capacity to dissociate those movements? If we're wanting to do it dynamically, how do we make sure he's got the capacity to do it in a controlled environment? Yeah, it's going to be something that's very, very important because we ask players to do something in their sports where it's very dynamic, it goes fast, the environment is very chaotic and they can't even do it in a controlled setting, that's going to be an issue, right? So what we're going to ask Carl to do is tilt the torso a little bit, about 45 degrees, and then he's going to have to rotate, rotate his pelvis around the spine, right? So the obliques are what control the pelvis, right? They have attachment on the iliac crest and the inguinal line, so they're going to have a great moment to twist the pelvis. And we see that Carl is always going pretty much uh, to the right, so he's got a lot more range of motion going this way than the other way, but common adaptation to, <laughs> to athletics, right? So something that's going to be very interesting to look at. Now what we often see, Carl is pretty good, he's a pro baseball player, right? But what we're often seeing in, 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 in kids that we're screening, um, or even elite athletes that we're screening, is that they don't have that that awareness at all there's absolutely no connection so you get them in this position and you ask them to move their pelvis and they're like moving their shoulders around or they're not able to dissociate the torso and the pelvis right so there isn't any of that awareness to disconnect those pieces so now that we did the pelvic twist test uh, we're going to look at something else to see if he's going to be able to uh, activate that external oblique especially so he's going to get in the half kneeling position for the uppercut test. So right here he's gonna squeeze the rear glutes. He's gonna have to uh, get a stable base and we're looking at uh, Carl if he can rotate the upper body on a stable upper body. So what we're gonna do here is if I just get my hand very simply, like if I just go there and make sure that he's able to fire that external oblique, it's gonna be very important, right? So what we see here is that the external oblique 
uh, attaching on the fifth rib is going to have a great connection to the pec major to transfer force to the upper body and it's got a good fascial connection too to the serratus anterior so what we're going to do here is really getting the ability to contract it to transfer force to the upper body. All right, so there we have it. A couple of screens, I think, to be able to tell if an athlete is able to dissociate the pieces to then be able to get in, but also out of positions. And what would you say? Like, if you do the screen and you find that someone's really bad at it, both of those screens, the pelvic twist and the, the uppercut screen, um, is it something that you would use to then build that awareness? Like, can you use the screens as, a, as an exercise to build awareness? Yeah, there's actually two great screens to use as exercise because it's really about building that body awareness. And to me, as a coach, uh, really, I'm going to have to focus on those exercises to transfer to my sport. I mean, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty much a waste of time to focus on these movements when you can't do it in a controlled environment. So, to me, it's very, very important test to, uh, to look at. Awesome. So let us know what you thought in the comments. Try out the exercises. Let us know how you do, <laughs> how you dissociate. Um, and we'll see you next week.